Welcome to Fred Not. My name's Rob. My name's Colton, and welcome back to the High Gain series. Yes. We're back in it. Uh, but you didn't think we would. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna get divorced. That's all it is. <laughs> She's just gonna divorce me if I don't quit buying these high end guitars. So tonight, do we have a special treat for you? Before we tell you anything about it, I'm gonna tell you what happened. About four months ago, I spoke to a luthier and we talked about a project and I kind of gave him the specs on what I would want. Um, he had a brand new body style that he had never made before that he was working on. He kind of showed me the rough on it. Uh, I told him how I wanted it to be, what all I needed on it. He started to work on it a week or two later. He told me he had sent it to paint. He sent it to paint. Um, the guy kept it for a long time at paint for some reason. Anyway, when he got it out of paint, which took quite a while, um, it had a lot of runs in it. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of messed up stuff on it. So long story short, uh, he took the guitar back, stripped it again, took everything off of it, and then took it to another painter. And at that point in time, we felt like the guitar was probably history, you know, unless getting yeah. it or whatever. Who knows? So about another month later, he called me and he goes, hey, I got that guitar back out of paint. It looks amazing. And I was like, really? And he sent me pictures of it. And I'm like, why ain't you shipped it? So <laughs> there you go. Um, so we'll do the honors. Yes, we have another Lucello. This is the Obsidian. This is a brand new body style by them. And as far as I know, I hope I'm not wrong, Mario. This is the first one he ever made. Um, it is super, super nice. Um, mm -hmm. I just got this in. So I'm going to use a cheat sheet to give you guys... Um, a little bit of uh, the specs on it, and then we're going to shut up. We're going to let you hear it in a mix, uh, and then we're going to come back and we're going to tell you what we think about it after having it and playing it for 48 hours. So let me get my cheat sheet. So this body and this neck is Spanish cedar. Can you turn that around to where they see the cavity? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what the body actually looks like. Of course, I had it painted. I just wanted a black and white guitar, so but that's what the body looks like. Um, it's got a, obviously a black and white gloss finish. It is a Pale Moon Ebony fretboard, and I picked that fretboard out of everything that he had because I thought that would look amazing on mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's got lumen, lumen lay side dots. Um, it's got off and I think they're lumen lay offset fret markers. Yeah, uh, are mm -hmm. they? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's got extra jumbo stainless steel frets. It's got hip shot uh, locking tuners and bridge. And this comes with the new Fishman Mick Thompson signature set from Slipknot. Nice. And it is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it has a black tusk nut, and it is just a very, very slick guitar. It doesn't have a lot of weight to it. I'd say it's yeah. probably about six pounds. Yeah, it's it's very lightweight. Nice. I like it. And as uh, you're going to hear on the deal, now when we do the live on it, you're going to hear the vintage side of the pickups. It has the settings for the modern of mix actual tone or the tone he created for these pickups. And it has a vintage uh, on the small switch and then it has a coil split on the small switch and if you're in mix um, particular tone and you pull the volume out yeah. it gives you a bass boost to that so I thought that was really cool mm -hmm. yeah uh, unfortunately when we got it we got it pretty quick and uh, to get this video out I've been playing the crap out of it but I didn't have any of the specs on it till just a few minutes ago and I recorded it on the vintage side but to me that's the one that sounds Great, man. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. So the vintage size of those pickups, I believe I read it right on the diagram, is is not is passive. Mm -hmm. And then mix is powered. Nice. So I thought that was really cool. So what you're going to hear is the passive side as opposed to the battery side. Um, the fit and finish on this is just about as close to perfect as it could be. I haven't seen anything from it that uh, there's not a mark, scratch, um, no paint problems, nothing. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we wouldn't expect anything else from a cello. You know what no. I mean? Mario is amazing. If you don't know who he is, man, make sure you go check it out. There'll be links in this video. He's out of Canada. Uh, if you're in America, it means you're going to get the guitar really quick. 
Um, he's the super cool dude. Every, he, this is the third guitar he's built for us. And he's built every one of them pretty much to our specs. Mm -hmm. um, the other two models we have, if you've been around <clears throat> this channel, both of those bodies are the same body. One's a seven and one's a six. And I believe those are called Raven's Claw. Raven Claws. Raven Claws. And this is the Obsidian body mm -hmm. style. Yeah, I really dig. I mean, I like the other ones as well, but I dig this one a lot too. I believe we have the very first one of the Obsidian line. This is the first one. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, if you get a chance, man, check him out. He's got good prices. When we come back out of the mix, we're going to tell you about the prices, how you get it, how to find him. Um, and I I don't want to tell you the other part yet. We'll wait till we get back out of the mix, and then I'll tell you that part, and you'll see why I'm so fond of this guy. We, we have a lot of luthiers, man, Arda, Ashwood, um, Reichart. Yep. This dude, I mean, that are just uh, – BHI, man, mm -hmm. they're just, everybody that we buy from that's not a huge company that's a single luthier, they're just amazing people, man, because, you know, their whole business depends on every guitar they send out. They're not like, uh, next week you're going to see a video and you're going to get to hear me rant about a big box builder. <laughs> but anyway, we won't do that tonight because this is the high gain series. It ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to shut up and let you hear these Mick Thompsons in the mix <laughs> we'll be right back You got to hear it in the mix. What do you think about the sound of it? I like it a lot. So that's so, well, we're kind of jaded on that because we he only got to hear it because of our work schedules and everything. He's only got to hear it in the tone you just heard, and mm -hmm. we haven't got a chance to sit down and go through all of it. I will tell you this: I'm not a professional at these pickups and uh, voicings of of uh, who is it? Mick. Not Mick. Uh, Fishman. Oh, Fishman's. They are very articulate. Mm -hmm. um, very good sounding pickups, and if, you, if you've been around the channel, if you know anything about me, I'm not really wild about any kind of an active pickup. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. I just like a real good passive pickup to do what an active has to do to carry mm -hmm. you know, the, the line signal. Um, but man, I'm really impressed with these, and I hadn't even got a chance to do everything that I needed to do yet. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. If it just, I'm, not, I'm on the vintage voicing doing that, so. Um, so we got this from Lucello, I believe a hundred percent. This is a four month ago. I don't think it's changed. I believe this is 2,200 Canadian dollars. If you factor that back to American, probably 18, 1800 bucks. It's not, it's not bad for something kind of like of this quality. So I will put that in anything Lucello builds up against any, uh, ESP E2 built in Japan against any prestige Ibanez builds. You know, Gibson just came out with a, a body style. Kind of looks like that in a way, but it's actually from the 80s, I believe. They were trying to kind of duplicate a, a, a Super Strat, you know. Mm -hmm. It flopped in the 80s. It didn't stay around. It was a totally different guitar than what they sell now. Yeah. 
and I was looking, it's, just, it's only been out a month or two, and I thought, well, maybe they figured out how to get the G-string right on this body, you know what I mean? So, I, And it, it kind of looks like this, it's more squared, it ain't as pointy. So I went on last night and I did some research on it. It's an 18 to 19.99 for their base model. And then it's 24.99 to get a top on it that is of some flamed or something, you know, mixed color flamed or just decorative, let's put it that way. I'm not talking bad about Gibson, but I'm just telling you at 24.99 it still don't come with stainless steel frets. Go read the stuff. <laughs> Go read it. And it's got an Explorer headstock on this one. They changed it and they put an Explorer headstock on it, which actually it looks kind of good. Mm -hmm. I was like, really, Gibson? You're going to charge me $24.99 and I can't even get stainless steel frets? That's probably like their most kind of maybe exotic looking headstock for something not on a Les Paul or yeah, SG. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good headstock, man. And it looks mm -hmm. amazing on an Explorer. It yeah. was designed for that. But I, it's just weird to see kind of that body style with that Explorer. Yeah. You know, the 80s. It looks like a bird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking bad about Gibson, but I'm just telling you, man, I'm, I told you that for the reason behind these type of people. If you can go pick these up for two grand, man, that's a lifetime guitar. Um, I don't know what those pickups cost. They're probably close to $400 for those pickups. Yeah. Um, and all the appointments you get on this guitar, man, uh, you just cannot beat it. And I know y'all think that I'm riding on Mario's co coattails, but I don't get a penny. I never have, and I've been paying him out of pocket. But I'm just telling you, if you've never touched one of his guitars, man, you really need to check it out. Uh, yeah. He's I mean, super luthier. Yeah, we would. I would. I feel like I would at least praise any kind of luthier that we have shopped from like this. Yeah. You know, and it it's not anything particular to to just him. You know, all all of the high gains that we've that we've got and reviewed, they've all been amazing. Oh yeah. And. Uh, but we just, you know, we really like the work that he does. And then this one, like he said, came along and it's just, it's sick. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is sick. It is sick. Hey, and if you know anything about this channel, my wife come in the other night when this came in and I had the case open and she went, oh, I like that. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> my wife does not talk to me about guitars. So I don't talk to her about drums. She don't talk to me about guitars. So I, uh, I think it's a pretty, I say it's a pretty reasonable price just coming out of the the entry level series when what we're talking about there's a couple hundred dollars right, right that is a really good deal but w when you shift gears into you know a different tier mm -hmm. we'll say it is a pretty decent price for something like this well, to get price, something unique to you it's priced just like an Ivan is you know prestige mm -hmm. they're like 1899 yeah and don't get me wrong I've owned a I don't want to say a ton because I'd be lying I think I've owned three or four Ibanezes, and I've owned some you know, a couple thousand dollar Ivan is, there's nothing wrong with those guitars. I'm not saying, I love mm. Wizard Necks. I, I just, it don't have that. Whatever yeah. it is that that guitar has, it don't have that. You'll now, understand you, what that is when you hold it and play it. <laughs> yeah, and that's weird because you're not touching it. But uh, I'm just telling you, man, uh, I've played a lot of those out of the factory and it doesn't, you know, I ordered a, a $4,900 Les Paul one time and this was years ago. So that's probably seven, eight grand now. And don't get me wrong, the guitar played amazing, but there was all kinds of little imperfections and crap, to be honest. I don't even know if that has stainless steel frets. Who knows? It is what it is. Stainless. Man. Stainless steel frets? Stainless. Maybe they were stainless. Maybe that's the way <laughs> they did it. So make sure you go to the links, man. Even if you can't afford one of these, go check out his page. He's on Facebook. He's on IG. I'm going to put all the links in there. Just go... Go look at his stuff, man. He's got a ton of guitars he's made. He's not as popular in America. We kind of caught him by accident about a year ago. Yeah. And this is the third one I've ordered, and all three of them, I send him money in the blind. Now, the first one, I'm just like you going, I don't know what I'm going to get back. But after yeah. I've seen the quality of the first one, I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Here, just make me a guitar. <laughs> That's how good of a I feel like he is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, our, our all of our luthiers so far, the ones that we kind of have kind of clung to, Reichardt, Ashwood, mm -hmm. uh, Lacello, BHI, Arda, those are single luthiers, man. They build everything from scratch. And if it ain't perfect when they send it out, they might not have a business tomorrow. Yeah. 
their name goes with it. Yeah, you know? and so that to me, that's that's worth that money because a lot of times that stuff coming off a factory line, you may have 12, 15 different people working on that guitar, and one may, you know, maybe somebody shot his dog that day. Maybe he didn't feel like doing it right, you know? Yeah, I mean, I hope not. Maybe yeah, but he, he just spilled his coffee on the way home. Right, or something, you never know. <laughs> I just feel like these have more soul. And this particular guitar, man, he told me about this body style. He sent me a picture, and he goes, I've got this that's in the works, man, but I don't have anything right now. And I'm like, dude, what's that? You know, what are you going to do that of? And he said, it'll be out of Spanish cedar. And I'm like, well, I know you're going to kill me because you're kind of a wood guy, but would you paint it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what? you don't want to paint that? I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I don't have very many painted guitars, but I just nice, wanted though. one like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's mean. Yeah. Very aggressive. All right, guys, listen, uh, we are humbled. We appreciate you. Keep in mind, our memberships are up on the bottom, up, right up under the video, man, if you can get in on the memberships. We've slacked over the last couple of weeks. We've only did one or two things for the members, um, but we're about to start back because of moving and everything. It's just been psycho. We've Stuff's had to change locations. Air. It's been crazy. Uh, but, but stick we're, with us. Yeah, yeah, we're about to put some more stuff up. And... Uh, we've just met some more people that are going to get involved here real soon with the uh, Meet Your Maker series. Yes. We're going to have some luthiers. We're going to have some guitar builders. We're going to have manufacturers. Um, we've got a new luthier that we just commissioned or we're about to commission in the next day or so to start a new project for us. And I think we're going to take you guys along with us. Mm -hmm. On that, we're going to let you meet him, sit down and talk to him. Uh, we're going to show you all the woods that we picked out. And we're going to kind of keep you guys with us as we go through that process till it's finished. Yeah. Because he's a little more local to us, and we can take the time to go to him and kind of film. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a good deal, man. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool. Make sure, no matter what you do, if you play guitar, man, make sure you go check this guy out, man. I wish he has a huge following in Canada. A lot of bands up there play his guitars. And I know there's a lot of people in America that play them, but it's just not a household name yet. Not yet. But I'm telling you, if you put one of them in your hand, this is the third one I bought, and I didn't need any three of them. But if you own one and he makes one, you got, you'll want another. Yeah. All right, guys. Listen, we're humble. We appreciate you. Make sure there's also a, a super thanks button on the deal if you just want to help give to the channel. It helps us keep doing this. Uh, we want to keep doing these reviews. We have the Entry Level Metal Series that's also one of our series. And on that, we just go out and find the what we feel like is the best bang for the buck just on entry level guitars that you can rock out on that are actually going to be decent and mm -hmm. you're not getting a piece of crap in the mail. Yeah, uh, We bring those in, review them. Uh, sometimes we mod them for you guys, but every time we buy one of those, we give them away to the people on the channel. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're humbled. We appreciate you guys. And until next time. Stay tuned.